And I'd like to now invite Annabelle, uh, who's I suppose has been doing something from you know which is right up my street from yeah. street street based up uh, in a local area, and I've been dying to hear yeah. uh, more about uh, uh, Annabelle's neighbourhood network. So she's got me as a, a kind of Debbie McGee assistant, which might not bear well uh, if uh, I, if I get thrown out again. But uh, are, are you okay, Annabelle? Too. Yeah, sure. Just Thanks. To start. Yeah. And shall I? Uh, I don't need them yet, but um, if I sort of shout, um, I can't actually see them, so I'm going to say, can you see a picture of? You know. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see how this goes. Um, so, uh, yes, as Angela said, I mean, it's not um, my network, it's the, the Froom Neighbourhood Network that I'm going to talk about. And I'm coming from um, a very different position to Rachel's. I'm coming as, um, as a resident and citizen of Froom. Um, um, I think of myself as maybe one of the many active citizens that, that there are here. And uh, I've been here 30 years and I've been involved in various social and environmental and community arts organisations in, in different ways. Um, so uh, you may know that, that about Froom, um, it's, a, it, it's, it's, it's known for its um, independent council, obviously, um, over the last 10 years. and very much that's, um, um, that's, that's been a part of this whole kind of development of participation and engagement and, um, and, the, and a very supportive council is, that's for sure. Um, it's uh, in many ways, Froome is a thriving town and it's uh, got a wealth of community organizations and it's got a really excellent and efficient social prescribing unit up at the health center. And there's, also a very can-do attitude here. So there's lots of things going for it, but in other ways, it's got a lot in common with other towns. It's got social divides and it's got areas of deprivation and loneliness and food poverty and this individual individualism that runs through our society, um, which we are looking to address here in lots of ways. Um, and so the network, we set up the, the network just after lockdown um, in March. Um, really, just at this time, and all these mutual aid groups were starting to set up uh, in streets across the country, and we saw it as an, an opportune moment as people began to see the value of neighbourhood connections, and we really wanted to encourage what was happening and create a supportive network to help it grow. And the bit of background to this is that, um, on the one hand, we had a town council with a community development um, department where neighborhood connections have been a thread, one of the threads in their work program for the last five years, I'd say. And on the other hand, um, in my own community activism, uh, I, um, I've been focusing a lot on neighborhoods and community connections uh, for, for about the same time and, and did a piece of research for the town council around this. Um, so it, it's been on my radar and um, I wanted to, to, to do this, this project of the network and I got in touch with Kate Hallard, the community development officer, and she and I cooked it up basically, started mapping the streets where these groups were, were springing up and inviting representatives to come to a meeting online. So what we wanted was to enable existing and new street groups across the town to connect with each other to share experiences to share ideas and inspiration and practical resources and support um, and that was the that was sort of initial um, impetus if you like um, we began having networking meetings every other week and we had people who had recently set up a group people who wanted to set up a group and others who'd been active in their streets for, for a long time. So there was a lot of shared experience and a lot of shared learning that was going on. And out of this group came a number of the, uh, what we call networkers, the representatives, who agreed to meet uh, to create a kind of steering group. And uh, we wanted to come together to look at building the organisation and um, looking at our purpose, our vision going forward. And I'm um, going to tell you some of the things that we that we came up with for our aspirations. Uh, to begin with, our understanding right from the beginning was that this wasn't just for the current crisis, um, but this is gonna serve the longer term aim of building resilient communities uh, across our town for whatever the future holds. 
with awareness of all the looming crises that, that uh, were there. And we wanted to establish a network that was citizen-led, uh, self-organizing and independent um, in order to support flourishing neighborhoods where people know each other and actively cooperate to make things happen. Uh, we also wanted to grow grassroots power and citizen action. And we were envisaging a new democratic culture that's participatory starting from the street level. We also wanted to reconnect groups with decision-making channels in Froome and beyond so they could be part of decision-making in things that affected them. We wanted to promote self-sufficiency through sharing our resources and assets and sharing ideas across neighborhoods. Uh, and we wanted to build trust between people where they live, trust in our capacity to act and make a difference and trust between us as citizens and with the politicians that represent us so that we can collaborate in ways that are in the best interests of the community. So we are now 60 streets signed up and there are others that we're still finding out about and, and bringing on board. Um, and there are some streets who don't want to join and that's fine as well. Um, but all the people who do sign the networkers get a monthly newsletter and they get regular up mail, email updates and um, they share that news with their streets. There's also a Facebook page which we use for sharing ideas and um, much more broadly used and it's, it's at the moment it's being used quite a bit by people who are moving house in Froome or to Froome and it seems that it's not just um, the community of Froome, a friendly community that they're looking for, but a friendly street. And that we've had quite a few examples of people moving to a place because they know that they've got good connections and a, a good sense of the you know, community. So I'm um, going to show you some slides in a moment, prompt. And uh, the, just to say that um, the network is evolving in its own day, way. And during lockdown, we've seen amazing creativity from people um, in finding ways of connecting and various projects. So there have been street concerts and treasure hunts and plant right sharings and all that kind of thing, as well as a practical support. So um, in the first slide, is there one there, Angela? First, okay, well, so you've seen the, the logo for the um, Froome Neighbourhood Network, which is quite, um, yeah, go back one. It's, um, it's, that's our new logo, which is just uh, no one's seen yet. <laughs> um, and then if you go to the next, the next um, one, that is an example of um, something we decided to do in Froome um, at Halloween when kids couldn't get out to do trick or treat. And we just said, let's do a window wonderland. And you've probably all heard of window wonderland, but we did one in, in Hat for Halloween and there were 400 households that took part. And, um, and it was just very lifting of the spirits, I should say. And um, people absolutely, yeah, they absolutely love them. So that's, that's that. And um, in the next slide, is this from Hoedown? Uh, this is uh, these people getting out and removing weeds from their street um, as a way of trying to persuade the district council that we don't need glyphosate and um, that deadly weed killer on our streets. And so it's continuing every once a month on a Sunday, people are getting out with their hose and meeting their neighbours and um, tidying up the streets. And it's led to other things, litter picks. It's led to painting of the railings along the street and other ways of enhancing our environment and just getting on with it, really, not asking for permission. <laughs> and so that's the hoedown. Uh, that, the next one, you'll see a picture of um, a few hoedowners. And, um, and then uh, the next one um, is a picture of um, a share box, which is outside my house right here. And um, someone's nodding, so I guess you might have heard of these share boxes. It, it's, it's just worked brilliantly. It's, uh, it's used by so many people. It's such a tenor of stuff. And I, 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 I get a sense from people that they are delighted with this idea of sharing, of I can just take something and I can give something and that feels good too. Uh, so it's, uh, I think it's generating a really good feeling um, in people. And I've had some great conversations out there as well with uh, people who've come to the other side of the room because they want to visit our share box. And if I show you the next one, um, it's, this is, there's a few more have sprung up. <laughs> they, keep, they keep popping out all over the place. Um, maybe people in Froome are kind of used to it because we've, we've got a community fridge and we've got um, 
uh, a share shop. So that kind of idea of sharing is kind of in the ether, you know. So that's the the just a little glimpse of the sorts of things that have been going on um, in lockdown. And yeah, so that's and and you can turn it off now. Thanks, Angela. Um, and uh, I just want to talk about a few other things we've been doing. Some trainings we've been offering trainings such as how to get the street group going, play streets, planning a street party. Um, and very recently we did one on how to have restorative conversations because something that kept coming up in our networking meetings were, was that there was, um, there was a, a, people felt um, that they, did, they weren't equipped to deal with disputes that arose in their street. And, uh, and there was a question of, could, could, we, could we find a way of dealing with this as a community rather than always going to the police or to the authorities? Um, let's let's think how we could do that. So we had quite an in-depth training, and there's now a group of us who um, are looking how we can support the network and 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 really share more of these kind of skills of ways of talking to people and ways of um, resolving tensions before they become conflicts. If you like, it feels really important. Um, and as, as well as that, as a resource to the network, we have um, a group of people, including myself, who trained with Trust the People which is a course in community organizing. And we have, um, we've, we've offered ourselves to the network as a bunch of facilitators who can facilitate people's assemblies and community meetings. So, so that's another resource where we're also talking to the town council about, about this and they are working kind of alongside us um, with this idea of people's assemblies. So some things that have uh, worked well uh, for us, uh, really, we've seen the value of the network in spreading ideas in a kind of cross pollination, um, and then some ideas really taking off, and then other people kind of running, running with that. And it's a kind of like, um, yeah, it just generates a lot of activity and a lot of um, seeing something that's working, using that as a model. Um, um, there are groups that have come together over issues like protecting a green space and they, you know, the fact of engaging and getting into the decision making together, these, these can really strengthen a sense of community and how we work together. Um, we realise that each street is different because people who live there and what their interests are and what local assets are and where one thing that the network emphasizes is that we don't oversee or run any street group, uh, which we recognize as being independent, self-run and doing absolutely what's best for them. Um, we're talking about this number, the a good number, say for a, uh, a, a, a kind of a democracy, if you like it, like uh, as, um, as Simon was talking about, when we talk about a streets, what's a good number for a street? Uh, and we think something like 20 to 30 houses is, is an optimal size. Um, in my own street, there's 25 houses and 70 people. And over the last sort of five years that I've been um, kind of in encouraging you know, the community here, and and we've well, we've been working together, I can say that I know the names of everyone on my street now. Um, and we're also beginning to see now is a number of adjoining streets connecting with each other to form a wider neighbourhood group. And there's a much more potential here for sharing resources and maybe having wider forums for meetings and, and looking at projects and issues together. Okay, we're nearly there. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about our, our learnings and things we've learned and some of our challenges. So one of our challenges, which was touched upon earlier, is, um, is how to be more inclusive in our neighbourhood and, um, and, and, and in our neighbourhoods and in our network. Um, we want to share stories about where that's working well and we want to be actively looking to how we bring in marginalised groups, marginalised people. Um, we, we feel that the street is, is a great opportunity. On a street, you can have a wide demographic of people. And if we can get it right, you know, we, we, we can build the relationships which then enable us to create welcoming spaces that people can come to. Um, for me, there's also a, a big question, a personal, but it's also shared by others, which is if we're looking to reweave the fabric of communities, how do we do that whilst acknowledging the wider fabric of the natural world of which we're a part uh, so that we are really growing sustainable communities for the future? Big question. Um, and those of us uh, who have big, uh, big ambitions for the network, you know, a lot of us feel a sense of urgency that uh, we really need to get together in community to face the upcoming crises of um, 
social environmental. And we feel that the stronger our networks are, the better we'll be able to respond. However, we realize that it takes time to build relationships and for people to come on board. And we have to accept people get involved in their own way at their own time. Uh, we can't make things happen, but we can provide a kind of fertile ground and water the seeds when they emerge to use the spring metaphor. Um, so um, the, other, the other interesting kind of issue question is how do we collaborate with our town council in a positive way where the ownership is with the community? And at the moment, we're getting a lot of support from the town council, which is really valuable. But sometimes there's a perception that the network is an extension of, of the council, which is problematic in our thinking, because we know that people are more supportive of truly local initiatives, um, that they'll give more energy and more commitment and they'll feel more rewarded if they are part of something that they feel they own. So. Um, so we need to keep reasserting this is a citizens led network, basically. Um, and so to bring this back to the movement for neighborhood democracy, um, and we, we feel that a network like this really lays the ground for participatory democracy as part of the picture of what communities can do for themselves in order to flourish. And if we're talking about creating real democracy and a shift in power to local people, at the moment, we don't have the local structures in place to enable people to have their voices heard in issues that affect them. Um, we see that the network could potentially be this platform, starting with the smallest unit of a street and building a system from there. Something a bit like the neighborhood parliaments model, um, which is taken off in India, which some of you may have heard about. Um, so um, so in, in my opinion, and it's probably evident to everyone here, but to build a healthy democracy from grassroots, from the neighbourhoods. I think we need more than just a system imposed. We need everything that makes community. We need to build relationships, get to know people with different life experiences and views. We need how to listen to each other. We need experiences on a project towards a shared purpose, making decisions on the way. And we need to enjoy ourselves and feel a sense of community spirit. And remember how important it is for our well-being as social creatures. Um, these are things that I think are fundamental and part of what will make real change towards democratic culture. So that's it. And I'm really happy to be sharing this with you and learning um, so much from um, all the different experiences that you're, you're having out there towards this vision of neighborhood democracy. Thank you. Thank you, Annabelle. Uh, Very you. good, thank you. Yeah. I love listening to that. Has anybody got any questions or any comments that you would uh, like to make? I can see Nick has got uh, uh, his finger up. Would you like to join in, Nick? Is, is, that, is that okay if I go first? I think that was fantastic, Annabelle. I'm, I'm um, so excited by it. And, and it, I suppose my question, I've got a few, few questions going around my head, but I'll stick to, to, to one. It's about activism. It's, um, we, we, we also generated something in the area I live, which was street connectors. And we, we, we got as many as 80-odd eight, streets connected during the first lockdown, which was fantastic. Wow. Um, we still got 50 or 60 street connectors on a WhatsApp group. Um, and we've probably got about 10 or 15 of those who are active in the sense of communicating and sharing information. Um, on my street of 30 odd houses, it's a similar, it's a similar sort of proportion maybe of lots, lots of sharing of information and, and support of each other, but it's maybe 10 out of 50 people who are active. The others are not, they're not, they're not undermining it. It's, it's, it's just, they're not, they have other priorities to give elsewhere. And, and so I'm, I'm trying to set up an event in, in, in our area now with, um, for our, for our street connectors. I'm really interested in a training course and I saw Solva, you, you're on it. So I'm, I'm gonna come back to you to talk about what it's like because if, but, it, but for me, how we would get people to go on a training course like that other than myself and maybe two or three others. Okay, you start with small acorns and you, and you grow. Um, what, what's, I, I did what, I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I said I wouldn't do, which was just talk a lot. I was gonna ask one question, wasn't I? Um, I'll, I'll stick to the question, which is around the voluntary sector. So 
where we have here, there's, there's, a, there's quite established charities working in this space with volunteers. And, and there's actually been a bit of pushback from what we're trying to do in terms of street connection, building circles of support around vulnerable people, or people who, I shouldn't say vulnerable, but valuable people, but the people who are shielding and who can't get out as much or who are on a venture or whatever it might be. They have a particular sort of need for a circle of support around them. We're, we're offering to do that as neighbours. But then there's voluntary sector organisations who are paid to do that. And there's a, I'm very aware of a kind of tension almost coming in. So we, where we're not seen as being pieces of a jigsaw, but we're actually seen as being a different jigsaw, mm. if you see what I mean. And it mm. it's all comes back to relationships and connections and trust and how you build that. Um, but I'm struggling with, to be honest, because particularly with the Zoom fact, we can't get together, so we can't. Mm. So I'm really keen to know any comment on any of what I've just said. I mean, I could go on for, for a while, but it's great to hear it working. And yeah, well, it sounds like it's been good. working for you as well, Nick. I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed with what you've been doing with your street connectors. That's brilliant. And it sounds I'm, I'm, very similar, actually. Yeah. Um, but and and the, and I and I and you, you said it already. The the whole thing of relationships, relationships with you know the town council, the local voluntary organisations. You know, we we just really need to have good communication and recognise you know what the piece is that we're doing and how we can work together. And um, you know, it, you know, to, the respect, you know, respect for communities doing it for themselves and. And respect for the role that a, t a council or an organisation has in the town, you know, and and um, yeah, and and work these things out. And sometimes there are kind of frictions, aren't there, and edges. And that's where being able to being able to um, have the spaces where we can have those conversations, difficult conversations, sometimes is important. I mean, it links back to my previous question for the for the Barnes one, which is about the councillors, because it's an area of friction. You know, it's a voluntary, voluntary, there's other players in this space that we need to work smoothly with and, and collaborate with and connect with and add value to everything. But sometimes there's, there's fragmentation and perspectives which feel threatened. Mm. Councillors have joined our WhatsApp group and almost taking it over in a, in a mm. well, some of them seem to be anyways. Mm. So it's, it's that bit you said at the end about how, you know, we own it and how to keep reinforcing yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. I, I absolutely agree. I've become much more assertive in the role of a citizen since I started doing this. No, this is a citizen's network. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you, Annabelle. And I, I think that's true, isn't it? Is that kind of, that's part of what this uh, movement is for, is for us to support each other so that we can all go off and, all, and, and agree like ways of working too, you know, like the flat pack stuff, really. Do, do have that which helps doesn't it it does help uh, I'm going to invite Rachel in and then Simon and then I think we'll probably have to stop there for questions uh, so Rachel you've got your hand up yeah, Annabelle, Nick, you covered it a little bit but I, I just wondered your I know you're doing this off your own back and and it's totally driven not by the council but what is your relationship with the you know how do you work with the council how mm -hmm. how does that relationship happen do you let them know what you're on with or do you not you know what's what's the sort of what's the relationship there mm -hmm. uh, well it's um it started off with the community development officer and myself having this um, well I went to her saying I want to join I want to build on this you know this yeah. new and, and her going well yeah of course that's what needs to happen and then um she found a a uh, lot she got a lottery grant for someone to work with us uh, for six months so we had a uh, support a project officer and who's still working with us so um you know she and I do a lot of communicating and she comes to our meetings and in a sense we uh, we are kind of um in, you know we give her the sort of this is what this is well, she has two bosses really it's yeah. like it's the network going we'd like you to do this and it's also the town council um uh development officer saying uh yeah and there's and we want you to do this so sometimes there's a little bit of a mm -hmm. uh whoa what's going what's happening here um and but basically we 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 know each other we like each other we are able to sit down with these things i think i'm at times, I'm a little bit of a thorn in the side because I kind of go, well, 
you know, that 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 um, uh, publicity went out and it had the town council brand on it and and it just doesn't sound like it's coming from us. And I really yeah. would like to just look at that and, you know, and then we do. And then yeah. there's an, because the council actually do, do buy into it being owned by the people. It really, they really want that and admit that it slips sometimes. Yeah. Because, because, you know, that's the, that's so used to doing it in this kind of a way of um, yeah. for and for and with rather than it being by with and for from our point of view. Sure, sure. Thanks for that, Annabelle. Simon, would you? Yeah, I suppose I, 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 I'm aware I constantly keep going on about ancient Athens. But <laughs> part, part of the reason I'm doing this is to remind people that there's a long history to this. And I suppose this is as much as anything a statement in reaction to what Nick said. You know, this culture of taking back control from the centre, including a culture that can take happen in the voluntary sector too for natural reasons, this is the historical conflict between oligarchy and democracy. Uh, it just now we call the oligarchy democracy. Oligarchy is the handful of people chosen to rule over us. That's how our system works. And I suppose the point is here not to have a big fight about it or go, you're goodies, you're baddies, but is to recognise that these tensions will constantly play out and what, and therefore, from the democracy side, the neighbourhood side, we have to think about what are the disciplines and structures, and Annabelle's touched on some of these, but what will, what will do those things which will grow good citizenship behaviour? And I, and, and I think one of the things, I'm just, I'm just going to throw this in, but we should be bolder, I think, about talking about a citizen's ethic, as well as looking at practical things like basic income, but I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, you know, we ought mm. to be citizens. We ought to behave like this. This is how, this is how we'll, I mean, I think the example of like dealing with the poisonous pesticides we put on our pavements is a brilliant example. We ought to take care of our earth better. And the only way we can do that really is by behaving better, more like citizens. You know, like we actually have to get out and weed our garden, not poison it. And, and, and then on many other levels, Sorry, that was more a statement than a question. It was, but it, it was a really helpful presentation and raised a lot of the the critical issues that we will need to kind of build on and address and explore in the coming months and years. Thank you. Yeah, and can I just say that I, I that, that's one of the things I appreciate about this group is that there are people from, from from these different positions, you know, from within councils, from within communities, and we can have this discussion openly you know about you know and be and that was mentioned honesty there was a lot of honesty earlier on about things that are difficult and you know we we can we can build those um those connections um and, and communications here i think yeah i'm really hopeful about that too annabelle as well yeah and i can see bob has got his hand up so go on bob do you want the last question you're on uh, mute at the minute <laughs> right, sorry about that. Again, like Simon, I don't think it's a question, I think it's a couple of observations. And you know, The thing that strikes me is that um, we, we're not going to have quick fixes doing this stuff. You know, we're in it for the long haul if we're going to get anywhere at all. And, and, and Nick's, you know, sort of three people out of ten in his street or whatever is, is, is just part of the game, I think. We, you know, we're actually needing to stick with the fact that we don't disappear when we do these things. I think so many um, sort of citizens movements that arise around particular things are around for a little while and they drift away. Um, and maybe it's because we lose the narrative. You know, the, the narrative is actually, as Simon says, we're, we're living in an oligarchy which is reinforced by a, a sort of outsourcing um, consumer culture that we're all part of and we all, we all actually make worse Quite regularly, I think you know, and we, we need to be aware that you know we, we 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 sort of hand things over to people to represent us in all sorts of ways, when when maybe that's not terribly helpful, and we need to keep that debate keep that debate alive, and recognise at the end of the day, as, as Simon said, this is this is a systems thing. It's stru it's structural at the end of the day. If we're going to change the structure, 
it will change because of people change it, not because of the people that are running the show change it. So that, that was my observation. It's, uh, as I say, it's not really a question. It's just an, an addition to the, the conversation. Yeah, thank you for your addition, Bob. And thank you very much, Annabelle, for talking about uh, what you've been doing uh, where, where you live too.